Hi everyone. My name is Fang Hua. I'm from UCL. Today, I'm glad to introduce our work, Ordinary Resilient Web Service QoS Prediction. This is a joint work with Zhiwei, Chuan, Zibin, and Hong. So, what are web services? Web services are the basic element of service computing. Web services are at the highest level of the computing value chain. They provide interoperability among software applications and help facilitate the development of business services. In the past few years, we have witnessed a rapid growth of web services and they have also been applied to different applications such as healthcare, financial management, and human resources. Although web services are useful, many web services provide identical or similar functions, which poses a challenge for users to select the most appropriate services. As demonstrated by the programmable website, there are more than 1,000 APIs providing mapping service. Quality of service or QoS has become the key differentiator for service selection. QoS describes the long functional characteristics of web services, such as response time and throughput. QoS values depend heavily on the invocation environment, so we need to obtain personalized QoS values. However, users have only a few QoS observations, so we need to predict unseen QoS values. Right now, numerous QoS prediction methods have been proposed. Matrix factorization is arguably the most popular technique used for QoS prediction. In this work, we will focus on matrix factorization based QoS prediction methods. Suppose that we have a set of users and a set of services, and also a set of QoS observations. Then we can represent these observations by a user service matrix. As you can see, there are many blank cells in this matrix. So the task of QoS prediction is to fill in these blank cells. Specifically, we factorize the user service matrix X into two low rank factor matrices U and S. Here U denotes the, denotes the latent features of users and S denotes the latent features of services. And then we use US transpose to approximate X. Obviously, US transpose should be as close to X as possible. So the question is how can we measure the difference between X and US transpose? The most popular approach is to apply L2 law to measure the difference between X and the U transpose. And then we can construct uh, this uh, objective function. So the L2 loss is smooth, but it is sensitive to outliers. When X contains outliers, if we still minimize this objective function, then US transpose may not capture the true QS values. L1 no loss has also been applied to measure the difference between X and the US transpose. However, L1 no loss is nice smooth, although it is more robust than the L2 no loss. Besides, L1 no loss is still sensitive to outliers. To show that it is really important to take the outliers into consideration, we conduct a data analysis on WSStream, which is a public QoS dataset. From this figure, we can see that most QoS values fall into a normal range, but there are some QoS observations taking values significantly different from the normal ones. These abnormal values or should be treated as outliers. Without taking them into consideration, 
the model may not achieve satisfactory performance. So the question is, how can we reduce the influence of outliers? A straightforward way would be to detect the outliers and then remove the outliers from the data set. However, this approach suffers from the issue called misclassification, which means that some outliers may not be identified correctly. Also, some normal values may be regarded as outliers. So the next question would be, can we achieve the best coarse prediction without detecting outliers explicitly? In this work, we try to address the two problems. Before describing our method in detail, uh, we first introduce the concept of M estimator. In the past statistics, M estimators are a broad class of estimators. The Ri denotes the residual of the S datum, and the function G measures the contribution of each datum to the loss function. To the loss function, uh, the function G should satisfy the following four properties. Then the objective is to minimize the sum of all the G values. We also define the influence function of G as its first order derivative, G prime. The influence function G prime measures the influence of which datum on the value of the parameter estimate. So if we want the M estimator to be the best to outliers, its influence function should be bounded and also converge to zero when X goes to infinity. Actually, both L2 low loss and L1 low loss are M estimators. Here we show their uh, loss functions and influence functions. We can say that the influence function of the L2 low loss is linear. So obviously, it is not the best of two outliers. The influence function of the L1 low loss is bounded, but it has no cutoff point. When x goes to infinity, it still takes the value either minus one or one. So in that sense, L1 no loss is still sensitive to outliers. Fortunately, we have the Koch estimator whose loss function looks like this. Uh, the corresponding influence function looks like this. This influence function takes the value in a range of minus one over gamma and one over gamma. More importantly, when x goes to infinity, this loss function will converge to zero. We also show the loss function and the influence function of the Cauchy estimator in this figure. Given the precious characteristics of the Cauchy loss, we apply the Cauchy loss to, to measure the difference between the uh, observations and the predictions. And then we, de we derive this objective function. It is pretty simple, so we can use a gradient descent to, opti to optimize it. Note that in this approach, we, doesn't, we don't detect the outliers explicitly, so we can say that our approach is resilient to outliers. Considering that the coerced values may change over time, it is essential to take the temporal information into consideration. In this case, we use a three-dimensional tensor to represent the coerced observations. The third dimension is used to capture the temporal information. Then we apply CP decomposition to factorize X into three low rank factor matrices, U, X, and T. We also use the Cauchy laws to measure the difference between X and the predictions. But in this case, we add a negative constraints to all the factor matrices to enhance the model's interpretability. Then we use the multiplicative updating rules to update 
U, X, and T iteratively. The specific uh, updating rules can be found in the paper. Now let's go to the experiments. We conducted the experiments on WS Dream, which is publicly available. It also contains both static and dynamic QS values. We we'll adopt the MAE and RMSC as the evaluation metrics. Both metrics are sensitive to outliers. Here, Q denotes the ground truth and Q hat denotes the prediction. We can say that if you want to minimize MAE and RMSC, the Q hat should be as close to Q as possible. However, if Q is outlier, then Q hat shouldn't be close to Q. So we can say that a smaller MAE and RMSE value may not truly reflect the prediction performance if the, if the data set contains outliers. So to make the evaluation more correct, we need to remove outliers from the data set. Unfortunately, we do not have the outlier labels, so we adopt the isolation forest algorithm to detect the outliers. This figure, this figure shows the shows some outlier examples detected by the isolation forest algorithm. We can see that it can detect outliers uh, successfully. We first report the results of static QS prediction. In this table, we show the performance with different training ratios. We can see that our approach consistently shows the best performance in all the cases. Then we report the performance with different ordinary ratios. We can see that our approach also demonstrates the best performance in all the cases. We also note that both MAE and RMSC take a smaller value when ordinary ratio increases. This is because when more outliers are removed from the data set during the testing phase, the evaluation will be more accurate. So we can conclude that it is essential to remove outliers to make the MAE and the RMSC be able to truly reflect the prediction performance. We also conduct a sensitivity analysis Specifically, we study the effects of the parameter gamma. Remember that gamma is the parameter in the coach estimator. We can say that our approach is sensitive to parameter gamma. This is because gamma implicitly determines which data will be treated as outliers during the training phase. So to achieve the best performance, we need to choose a proper gamma. As for the time aware cost prediction, the problem, the results are pretty similar to the static case. So I just skip the details. Finally, we analyze the efficiency of our approach. We can say that in the static scenario, our approach is pretty efficient. In a dynamic, dynamic scenario, our approach also runs faster than two baselines. In summary, in this work, we propose to utilize coach laws to measure the discrepancy between the observed QS values and the predicted ones. We extend the approach to take into account the temporal information. We conduct comprehensive experiments to evaluate the performance. The results show that our approach is superior. That's all about my talk. Thanks for listening.